Bro gang, I'm excited. Are you excited? It's not every day. There's a sickening 1 8 scale nitro directly on the shoulder, okay? As they say, the world is on your shoulder. And if by the world you mean a nitro, that's a true, actual, factual statement. You too could have this on your shoulder. But if you guys live with wives, girlfriends, I'm proud of you. But tell them nitros are an investment. Get yourself one. Let me say hello to everyone that is here. We got my good old friend Speed Gears here. How you doing? The Australian RC family. We got Nitro and Electrics RC. How you doing, my dude? Uh, we got, uh, who else we got? I already said hello to some people. We got uh, Geo Mac, uh, Nitro Wyatt, currently burning Nitro. Eric and Matthew, my friend, Tara Curry, who also got one of these, okay? So guys, I'm gonna tell you all about this. You saw... The last video I did, oh, we got Al Casa Mix RCs. Okay, guys, I'm a little excited. Got to take it easy a little bit. I actually, uh, just before doing this video, I was uh, going to use a different phone mount. And I was so freaking excited about the Serpent, I broke the phone mount. And now, I'm phone mount free. Sickening. Anyway, uh, just got this in the mail, I think, like, literally a, a day ago or something, right? So this is fresh, guys. Now, normally... I like to do a proper video on like a sickening unboxing like this uh, because, you know, I want people to have like a video experience, not like a long live that maybe they won't watch after. But I figure it's not every day that we get a new freaking Nitro out in the world, is it? So I put on the Nitro head shirt. You want to know why I didn't put on the two-speed baby shirt? Because it's dirty. I wore it too many times. In fact, I want you guys to know when I went to work, I like wear a regular like, you know, lumberjack looking button-down shirt but if it gets hot in there i have no choice but to take the lumberjack shirt off and people know they're like what's the two-speed baby and i go to them you know it's like when i get an email from my boss I, I respond to them on speed number two okay that's how fast the responses are all right we got grateful dabs what's up bro happy to see you here uh grateful dab sent me a uh, engine a while ago i have a project for that engine so don't worry i'm not gonna forget about that man then we got lucas stall cup a2RC, Michael and Zatari just joined the gasoline gang. He bought some sickening nitros, okay? I mean, gas RCs, what am I talking about? Gas RCs, okay. We got Boosted RC, what's up, bro? All right, guys, here's the box. I'm gonna open it up in a little bit, don't you worry. Um, we're all going to take a look at it. It's brand new now, when I did the original video, when I did the original video on this, um, they were sold out, like, literally, an hour after, okay, an hour after. I think A-Main must order like maybe three of them, okay? So I posted a link in the description to this video. If you didn't get one, guys, literally, like go go use the link right now. There's like a $30 coupon and go buy it. Lucas Stalkup goes, is this electric? So this box, they, it, you know, they make it in electric also. So half the box is nitro, half the box is electric. But you could rest assured, bro, I got the nitro version, you know? You could rest assured. Personally, I, I don't really... If I was going to get an electric, I'm going to tell you something, guys. If I was going to get an electric, I would probably get an Arma, all right? And I do have the Vendetta. Maybe I'll compare this to the Vendetta one day. But, like, I think electrics, if you're going to get an electric, you probably want an Arma, okay? Or, like, a nice Traxxas Rustler VXL. You know, you could ask Lotus420. He knows all about them. Um, okay, we got a cool D32 goes, is it RTR? Yes, man. Ready to run. So this is um, Serpent, right? And in fact, we'll go take a look at exactly another version of this that's available. I just got to wait a little while till people show up here. We will be opening it up. And I do have something else I want to show you. Now, today's video, um, I actually wasn't planning on opening this up, guys. So I'm, I'm going to tell you something. I'm uh, kind of cutting into my, own, uh, into my own content here because I like to do proper unboxing videos. I bought this with my own Nitro Gang money. We got KGM5512 here. He also ordered one. I told him, bro, did you see the Serpent? It's like a great deal. He goes to me, does it have two speed, baby? And I go to him, of course it got two speed. Do you think there's RCs on this channel with one speed? And then he said, yeah, there are. And then we basically said, yeah, there are, okay? And then he still went and ordered it, okay? So good, good, good negotiation tactics, okay? I was wrong, but he still got one. All right, so... Let me see what you guys are saying. We'll take a look at it. Jason Lopez, what's up, bro? He goes, I just got mine also. So the Serpent brand, it's a really good race brand, right? Like they make some of the world's best pan cars, but they're like 700 for the kit. What if you don't want to pay 700 for the kit? 
Well, this one is four sixty. Plus, well, there's like a thirty dollar coupon. You can get it for you know like much cheaper than that. I don't know about tax because tax is different than whatever like you know location you're in. Let me ask you guys, uh, quality okay right now? You guys see me? See me okay? Do I look like I shaved today? Because I I might have. I, I might have, okay? Now, um, Booster RC goes, yes, the electrics, they got no speeds. That's right. Let me see uh, what's going on over here. We'll take a look at it in a minute. Uh, let me just show you right now. I'm going to check myself if they're still in stock, to be honest with you. I, I, don't, I don't know. Okay, they're still in stock. Sickening. So let me, um, we're going to unbox it. We got almost 70 people here. Let me just show you guys. What's up, Mad Mike, bro? How you doing? He goes, check out Castor Racing Nitros. Castor Racing Nitros. I'm going to Google that right now. Hold on. Man, Mike here with a great suggestion. Look up some Nitros. Castor Racing Nitros. Okay, well, all I got was... Oh, shit. I got a Nitro right here. Okay, we're going to take a look at this later. Oh, they're on AliExpress. All right. Let's, let's not knock it until we know. We'll, we'll take a look at it. But for now, guys, I want to show you, um, you know, if you're looking to get one of these, I'm going to unbox. I'm not trolling you over here. Let me show you while they are still in stock. What's up there? JR Motors and Madness. And we got Harlem NYC RC cars. What's going on? Um, good question here from Oz RC Family. Serpent or Hobeo GT2? Can't decide. I'll talk about that in a little bit. I've done a video on the Hobeo um, on-road car, the Hyper VT. Those Hyper 30 engines, to be honest with you, they run really good when they're lean. Um, they're gas guzzlers. I've ran this particular engine that's in this. Uh, we'll talk about it. There's a little controversy maybe on like if people think it's a real Novorossi. I, I subscribe to the fact that this, in fact, is a real Novorossi engine in it, okay? So I'm a sus subscriber, okay? And if you're not a subscriber, subscribe, okay? But be a subscriber, okay? That's like something George Bush would have said, you know? Fool me once, you can't, you can't fool me again. Okay, I'm kidding around, okay? Uh, how you doing there, all aspects RC? All right, so let me show you right, right now, guys. Uh, I put a link just for your convenience in the description to this video. If you haven't hit the like, please hit the like. It doesn't update, so there's actually more than five. But if you haven't done it, please, like, you know, do me a solid. So here's the link. In stock right now. Click this link. It would really help me out if they're in stock. Oh, thank God they're in stock. I almost guarantee you by the end of this video, these will be probably sold out. Right, so it says limited quantities available. That means very limited. So here it is, 466. There's like a $30 coupon. Um, it's really, really nice, right? So we'll take a look at the box. Uh, we'll go over the features. But keep in mind, I, I will be breaking this in as soon as the weather gets a little bit warmer. I'm fairly familiar with this chassis layout because it, in fact, is um, almost the same as the buggy, except this is the two speed version and center differential free um how you doing there we got west hobbies rc uh bro i'm telling you right now is the time to get it while they're in stock i know you just spent some bucks over there but it's a one eight scale on road you know there's really nothing else that this competes with um like at all so really the question just came in this or the hyper vt and guys i have a couple of videos on the hyper vt already on the channel they're, they're very nice, but to be honest with you, they run turbo glow plugs. Turbo glow plugs are like expensive. Um, those carbs on the Hyper VT, they actually tune kind of, you know what? I, I can show you something right now. You guys want to see a Hyper 30 engine? Uh, tell me right now in the stream if you want to see a Hyper 30 engine. I'll show you the engine that's in the Hobeo. You know, I don't have the Hobeo now because like the one that I had wasn't really mine, but I highly urge you guys to use that link right now while they're in stock. I think they might even sell out. So I'm going to refresh in a little. They're still in stock. They're still in stock. Okay, what's up, Paver Saver? What's up, bro? So they're still in stock. Uh, I'll refresh it. And I'll go get the Hobeo Hyper 30 engine before I unbox it. Because I want you guys to, um, you know, just chit-chat a little bit. It's Friday Nitro. Um, I'm going to go get, like, some McDonald's fries after this. So you guys just chill out. Let me go show you, um, <clears throat> what is it, the Hyper 30 engine, right? Yeah, the Hyper 30. You want to see the Hyper 30? You guys are all hyper today. It's, it's all good. Let me go show it to you. All right. So um, I, I've done a couple uh, pretty sickening videos with this engine in particular already. Uh, in fact, the last Hobeo Hyper, what was it? The Hyper ST. 
No, Hyper VT, the Hyper uh, SST Truggy. Yeah, I think it was the Hyper SST Truggy. Oh, let me just set this up a little bit. Okay, the Hobeo Hyper SST Truggy. Um, great engine, but the thing is, it took me a while to tune it. Um, they are a little expensive, and the Hobeo parts support is worse than like customer service while ordering Chinese food. I'm going to be honest with you, it's worse than Chinese food customer service. So let me just refresh this right now, and I'll show you guys this engine. So we kind of know what we're talking about, but this is the Hobeo Hyper 30. It's a brand new one. Uh, Nitro White, what's up? I have the, the Raminator still here, man. I'm never selling it, okay? So this is the Hobeo Hyper 30. Let me get a little closer so you guys could see. Um, I mean, looking at an engine without really running it is like kind of, you know, useless, but um, congratulations to KGM with some good life success. And uh, guys, if you don't know, KGM is also a great RC channel, right? Uh, he's doing his best to make nitros and gas RCs great. In fact, he has some of the best fit scale RCs I've ever seen, all right? Plus, he will definitely tell you if your RC has no gas in it. You know, he'll definitely tell you that, uh, gu guaranteed. He told me one time, okay? And he was right, there ain't no gas in it. So, Hobeo Hyper 30, right? There's this, just don't worry about that. Um, so, these use like the COPS pull starter system, which is crank off pull starter. Now, these engines aren't really that expensive. They, they're called Hyper. The reason they're called Hyper is, well, first of all, they have a lot of ports, but basically turbo means you're supposed to use a turbo glow plug. Now, they're, they're a little more expensive, right? Now, in my opinion, these are great engines on the Hobeos. The thing is, these carbs are like terrible. Like when I was tuning this, and keep in mind, I've broken in like at least four of these engines uh, on the channel over the years. Like for sure, at least four engines, guys. So I kind of, you know, I, I never really want to say I'm a master because like, let's face it, that, that's like super cocky. But I, I've broken in from experience four of these engines. And they have all had exactly the same issues. Basically, it, it's really tough to figure out where it is lean or where it is rich. Really hard, man. Sickening. All right. Now, brand new, you know, that, that's all there is. These are pretty powerful. They're pretty high RPM. But I, I don't particularly like them. They're gas guzzlers, right? I like a nice .21. And that's what the Serpent has. So, guys, I'm going to put the Hobeo away. A brand new. I don't know where I'm going to put it yet because, to be honest with you, the, the only way to start these Hobeo engines, you have to preheat them to, like, the level of, like, uh... What's a hot planet? It's not Mars. What's the planet away from Earth? I mean, closer to the sun. Venus? No, it's not Venus. What's the planet? One, one planet closer to the sun. I don't know. It's, it's some planet. Um, all right. So they're still in stock. I would highly recommend you guys got it. Oh, we got a new channel member. Anthony Benati. How you doing, man? Welcome to the highest tier of the Nitro Gang. I appreciate that, bro. bro. And uh, just so you guys know, yes, I... Mercury, Mike Holmes Atari, Mercury, yes. Um, bought this with my own money, so this is like totally unbiased. So we're going to unbox it in like a few minutes. I'm sorry, I'm just kind of like wasting your time with this in the beginning. But let's take a look at the box itself. Because sometimes, oh, we got David VIP Auto. What's going on? Um, happy to see you here, man. I uh, told David VIP Auto about this model, right? And he goes, we're going to race this against the Hyper VT. And I told him, that is a great idea, man. That is a great idea. So the Hyper VT... They're, they're both two speeds, right? Unfortunately, I don't have one here to show you guys. I'm sorry. But uh, th this car, like, on its current sale is about $100 cheaper right now. So, actually, it's, it's more than $100 cheaper, right? So, like I said, click the link in the description to this video. I'll show you guys here again. Here it is. It's it's legit like this link right here. Uh, there's a coupon code. It'll take you to A-Main uh, for American buyers, 466, right? It's, it's real sickening. Let me just show you the box that that's what it is. You know, it comes with pretty good radio, 2.4 gigahertz radio, um, basic stuff, you know, decals, you got to put some of them on. It's an eight scale touring car. So this is not a pan car. I just want you guys to know it's not a pan car. These are not the same. So let me do a little search for related products, right? For Serpent, because they do sell a um, an on-road pro version of this. So this is the same car, the SRX GT8, SRX8, but this is the, the pro version. So it's 800 bucks. It's on back order. 
uh, but it's essentially exactly the same car. Now, I'll show you the picture so you understand I'm not trolling you. It's exactly the same car. Uh, tons of parts for these available. Basically, you get carbon fiber, you get like, it's it's really the same thing. Oh, David VIP Auto, been a member for 14 months, bro. Thank you. Appreciate that a lot. Um, weather's bad this weekend. We can't burn any nitro, you know, but we're going to soon. So, but I want to say is the fact that, yes, this is like really expensive for the pro model, but there's parts for these on, on A main. So that's good. Even though if you get the RTR, you're still technically um, the parts king over here, you know? So, oh my God, congratulations. They're done. That's it. Can't get them. Back order. Just refreshed it. It's sold out. Yeah, guys, I told you, you know, the, the, A main must order like three or four of them at a time. So you got to keep checking. But if you do, you know, check the links and whatever. Okay, let's, we're going to continue. I also put a link for a uh, a really nice LRP engine in the description of this video just before we continue. I want to show you I put in a best big block engine LRP32 right here. Um, Kyle C goes, I bought the last one, bro. I'm happy for you. I hope I hope uh, you're going to enjoy it. Let us know how it is, you know. Um because it's, it's new to all of us. So this the LRP32. The reason I'm kind of showing this engine is because I have a side project, right? You know how some people have side chicks? What's up, Rock and Roller RC? Man, thank you for joining the stream. Uh, this is a side project engine. 195 LRP32 with a pull start. Awesome savage engine. If you want to go fast, this is the engine you need. All right? Anyway, uh, weird that they don't accept coupons, though. It's kind of, kind of weird for this engine. LRP used to have coupon acceptance. Now they are coupon on in acceptance sickening all right sold out guys sorry about that i mean i'm not you know i don't work with a main they don't know who i am um they don't send me stuff for free trust me like i wish they did but they don't damn shame i wish they did all right so let me just uh get over to here back to where my stream is all right here we go my bad about that guys okay just got this in the mail. I'm excited. So I have a lot of experience with this engine. Are you guys ready? You let me know if you're ready. I'll uh I'll get ready. Actually, let me let me let me check my my hair first. Okay, grow my hair out a little bit over here. You know, uh, how's it look? Looks okay. Looks okay. All right. So it's a fairly big box. In, in a future video, I'll likely compare this to if I'm able to get my hands on a Kyosho GT2. So. Last year, the hot car to get was the Kyosho GT2, and now they're gone. Kyosho, their, their part status is the, the world's worst. Um, although the USA one is a great truck. To be honest with you, I really don't care much about parts. Like, if you don't crash them, you're not, you're not going to break nothing. Okay, yeah, Lotus 20, we got the tiny curls, you know. I don't know what to tell you, man. I got, I got the world's worst curls going on. Okay, Keith, Tollhurst, what's going on, man? Okay, guys, we're going we're gonna to unbox it. Sorry for all the talking. Are you, uh, you ready to check it out? Or do you want to do a little box overview first? You want to do a box overview? You want to do this for real? I'm going to do a good video on this anyway, so like, you know, it don't matter. Um, what do you want to do, box overview or just check it out? You want to open it like right now? I mean, you could tell me. I, I'm, a per peop I'm a people person, you know? I'm a listener, all right? I'm not one that's going to sit there and rant about how things have failed me in life, all right? So let me just see what you guys are saying. Uh, got a question. Does the Raminator run? Yeah, dude, to be honest with you, if it was like warm right now and hot and like, you know, I was outside, I could fire it up for you in three minutes. Okay. And two and a half of those minutes would be me basically putting a battery into it. That means I only need 30, 30 seconds to prime it. All right. Uh, I see we got a good question here from Rock and Roller asking about tuning. Um, you know, giving out tuning advice is 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 a little bit um, subjective because like they're different cars. Some people like different conditions. Like you know, in in my particular videos, I go for like a nice, rich, and loud tune. You know, some people go for like the really low idle tune, and then they claim that's a good tune. It's not, right? There's many factors to a good tune. What you want is for the car or the truck not to shut down when you accelerate. You want it not to run too hot. There's many factors. And these things you kind of learn over time, right? Uh, I don't think any single person could tell you 100% uh, correct. It's a lot of trial and error. I really recommend you get a heat gun. You tune to a proper temperature, uh, not over 250. Uh, we got Judge Joe. What's up, bro? Um, let's let's uh, let's open it up, guys. All right. Is everybody is everybody ready? By the way, I broke my phone mount. Um, 
if you want to see, I wasn't joking around. So this is normally like the phone mount I use. You see that right there? It's supposed to hold the clip. The clip broke right off because I was like too damn excited. Uh, world's best lighting also broke the phone mount. So I can't really ever use this again. So it's pretty pr pretty devastating actually, guys. Pretty, pretty devastating. Devastated. All right. Now, I know many of you ordered it, so you will have the pleasure of unboxing it yourself soon. But for now, we're going to do it together. Okay, let me get in on this. Yo, Melissa, you want to you wanna get in on this? All right, I don't know how you're going to get in. It's basically opening up a box. All right. So there is some controversy with, like, what engine this is. Uh, I'll be honest with you. Uh, Serpent doesn't really tell you much about the engine. I think there's licensing issues. But we'll take a look at it. I have some really good experience with running these already. So I'm, I'm pretty confident these are, in fact, um, Novorossi rebranded engines. I'm, I'm pretty confident. All right, let's uh, open it up. Oh, there it is. The box is, is a box, right? Um, this is sickening. So on the top you get... What's this? It looks like some some plastic accessories i'm not sure what that is maybe server what's up there we got brian schumann all the awesome ethical nitro gang families here uh we got stickers instructions stuff like that we'll put this to the side maybe we'll take a look at it. i'm gonna read it for the break-in like uh for people here that are uh trying to break in a new nitro i really recommend you read the owner's manual trust me guys the owner's manual is is a friend it's it's your friend okay now, there's some controversy on break-ins. Listen, as long as you're doing heat cycles, you really can't go wrong, you know? Now, tell me what you think about that. It is super wide. This thing is, we're going to compare this to an RS4. It's, it's a little bit hard to check out on camera because, like, it's so freaking huge, you know? But this is a proper 8-scale chassis. Uh, the GT2 is a large chassis also. But, in fact, it's mostly just, like, bumpers, okay? Don't let people tell you it's so huge and this and that. It... It's mostly just bumpers, okay? There's a lot of bumper space. When I take the body off, you'll see. All right, so here we got a box. This is the radio inside of the regular 2.4. What's up, Ben? Martinez, he got one of these on the way too, man. Uh, during this video, like, they all just sold out, all right? So, like I said, like, they all, they ordered, like, two or three of them. It's real sickening. Here we got, um, looks like panels for the wing. Yeah, probably for the wing. All right, so the car. Want to lift it out? We're going to lift it out, everybody. All right, got 115 people here in the stream. Thank you, guys. If you haven't given this a like yet, I would really appreciate it if you did. Um, you know, I go through a lot of trouble to come up with the video ideas. Uh, you know, you're not here. You know, I'm not here bantering to you. But if, if, it, if it's free, then do it. Okay. Oh, man, this thing's actually really, really sickeningly nice. Let me put it on top of the box. For now, like on the side over here. Let me let me put it on the box. Hold on. Oh, body's cutting me. Right. So, you know, uh, a lot of this channel is about restoring nitros, that is true. But it feels great to have a new one, doesn't it? I know, I know it does. All right, so we're going to get a little closer look. I'll give you guys a better look at this. This thing is real beautiful. So there is a clear tape on, on the body shell, as, as you would expect. Notice the super awesome cutout here for air cooling. Well, cooling. I don't have to say air cooling. It's, it's, it's obviously air cooling. There's no internal cooling system, right? This is not like a Honda motorcycle. Got 120 plus people in the stream. Thank you, guys. Um, let me see. I'm going to just do a little administrative check over here. You always got to do a little administrative check. You know what I'm saying? Unfortunately, time, times, times have come to administrative checks. What's up, Oscar Quendo, guys? Oscar Quendo was the first one to order this. He got it before I got it. Can you believe that? Sickening. Okay. I finally got one. Um, I was diligent. I waited for them to be in stock. Unfortunately, they're all sold out now. But if you do order it anyway, I'm quite confident they're, they will just ship to you on back order. Like, it, it's really no big deal. Uh, what's up there, Mighty Mike 1996? Um, we're doing the Serpent unboxing right now. Well, I already opened it up, but let me give, give me about a second over here. I'll remove the rest of this, right? Um, if you order it anyway, it'll just be on back order, and it will literally ship, like, anyway. I would still order it, right? Because, like, 
I think they order like maybe three or four of these at A-Main and then they all sell out. Like it's, it's real fast they sell out. So, okay, you ready? All right, let me uh, do a good look. I notice around the back, check out the rear end. So there's supposed to be stickers here. So yeah, it, it looks a little like nude because there, there's no stickers. Uh, giant rear diffuser on the bottom. I like that diffuser, that diffuser is hot. Um, check that diffuser out. It's literally like Arma level diffuser style. We have more diffuser here than like Robocop had bullets in his gun. Anybody ever come up with the, why Robocop had so many bullets in his gun? It's like, where did the bullets come from in his gun? I have no idea. Now the rear end. Check out that awesome cutout on the body shell. Um, you even have a spot there for your glow plug driver over the cooling head. That, that's honestly really good attention to detail. I like that because like cutting out your own chassis, uh, your own body, usually gets a little squirrely. You know, especially if there's like stickers, I really prefer, I prefer this. Okay, so let's go to the other side and we're going to uh, take the body off itself. Uh, if you guys are ready, you, you let me know. So if you want to get one of these, I think they're sold out now with the link anyway, but um, they're constantly like stock is constantly replenished. I would really recommend you still order it, use the coupon and stuff like that. Okay. Oh man, Al Casa goes. I ordered mine on back order. It was delivered in about a week. Exactly. Like my shipping was like four days. Um, so dude, I didn't even get on back order. It was on stock. You know, it's real sickening. Okay, we got 1541 C man. How you doing? So the stickers, yes, the stickers are here. Um, I might have glanced over it. We do have stickers, so these are the rear bumper stickers, right? So it's gonna look much better, like on the rear end. We got our channel member friend over here, Nightfall XJD. Guys, let me just say I appreciate you all. Um, you know, I'm not like trolling you. Um, I started this channel long ago just to like spread my RC good humored videos with like everybody, and I, I think I've accompl accomplished that to some degree, right? I want to say. For those of you out there that are trying to like grow a channel, um, don't compare yourself to other people because the reality is uh, any analogy you make to like other channels will not be a good one. You know, we all put in a different amount of effort and work into what we're doing and um, you should just be happy for the hobby, uh, not yourself. All right, so we're going to continue everybody. So um, I haven't really taken the body off myself, guys. I did look in the box before over 130 viewers here. All right, everybody. So. Um, are we ready? Man, this thing is juicy. I was just watching some Ohio Valley wrestling. There's a, there's a wrestler called... I forgot what his name is. Anyways, it's some guy, okay? OVW, OVW. All right. Guys, I don't know where we should begin, to be honest with you. Let me change up the view so we can get some better lighting. And we're going to do it, guys. Uh, special thanks for you for joining me tonight. Uh, like I said, I wasn't planning on doing this video. Normally, I like to unbox like expensive RCs like this in a proper video to, to really give the YouTube audience uh, some highly edited awesomeness. But because these things sell out real quick, uh, I didn't really want to wait. You know, people that wanted it, I wanted you guys to order it. All right, so you guys ready? Let's, uh, let's do it. All right, we got RC Nitro Flux here. How you guys doing? Also a good YouTube channel, guys. Uh, he's getting... He just got the Savage XL. Sick. All right. Thank you all for being here. Uh, so, like I said, uh, I bought this with my own money, obviously. Like, you know, I'm not sponsored by Serpent. I'm not sponsored by A-Main. I do recommend them all the time. But that's because, uh, well, they actually have nitros, right? So, um, they actually have nitros. <laughs> that's why I recommend them. It's, it's pretty straightforward. Okay, you just make sure the quality is good. This is probably some of the best quality I've ever had on this channel. Man, they got some super crazy body clips over here. These are like the world's biggest body clips. All right. Yeah, super, super serious body clips right here. I think I'm going to replace them with like proper 10 scale. These are like too enormous. I don't like such big body clips. Basically hard to remove. Nah, they're not too bad. But like kind of angled in a particular fashion. What's up, Dodger boy? 
Brand new 1.8 scale Serpent, guys. I'm excited. I, I've never really had a brand new 8 scale uh, on-road car. I never bought the GT2. The videos that I had on the GT2, those cars were, um, they were not mine. I was just lucky enough to have friends that, you know, wanted some um, break in action. And I, I was there to help. Why not, you know? All right, we got RC Street and Sand. What's up? Let me take off the rear body clip. Oh. Some hardcore body clips. You know, back in the day, I would make a little joke. I'm not going to make jokes like that right now, especially ethnic jokes in our current times. You don't want to be called an anti-woke uh, rightist. Hold on, leftist. Leftist. You don't want to be called a leftist, right? We all want to drive with our right hand. For reals, though. Okay. Let me see uh, what we look like over here. Yeah. Dodger Boy sponsored by his wallet. Me too, mostly, for the most part, you know. All right. You guys want to see under the shell? Oh, it rolls so smooth. Holy moly. That is some smooth drivetrain. That is nice. That is some smoothening drivetrain. All right. Doesn't smell like any weird Chinese rubber. It smells pretty good. Smelled it. It doesn't have a bad smell, guys. All right. Okay, we got a good comment here. Anyways, yeah. Political comments these days, the, the right is not going to understand. It, it's like talking to a wall. A wall that goes 50 miles an hour. Nowhere. But, like I said, the body is really, is really nice. The Lexan is thick. Uh, this is definitely Lexan. This is not PVC. I like that. All right, we can get rid of this. Looks like minor damage, I think, from the radio in the box. Yeah, I think the radio was like, kind of crooked. So it damaged this a little bit. Whatever, it's, I don't care, you know. What am I going to cry about it? I ain't going to cry about it. It is what it is. Sometimes you get damaged, sometimes you don't get damaged. All right, it's no big deal. Okay, here is the chassis, guys. I'm going to get close up to it. Thing is beautiful, to be honest with you. Let's do a close-up view. So, uh, one of the main things I want to point out about this chassis... This is something not really many people have pointed out. We have an inline pipe. Now, normally, you know, RTRs, they have a coupler. This is what you call an inline pipe. So you have springs. It's a very good straight exhaust flow, right? So basically, you don't have any reduction in the middle there. Because normally, when you have a coupler, um, there's like a difference of volume in, in the flow. Here, you have no volume differences. You might have a little bit, but it's really not, not significant. Um, it looks great, guys. What do you think? Yep. Uh, question is, how thick is it? It's pretty thick, KGM. Oh, man, the shocks. The shocks are on-road shocks for sure. Uh, ride height is actually quite adequate. I'm looking at it. It's got in stock setting. Let me take this uh, recording device. In its regular stock out-of-the-box setting, it's got pretty adequate ride height. I would say that is, that is awesome. Rinks, what's going on, man? Uh, Rings is working on a Revo 3.3. That makes us all happy. We love the Revo. We love it. Really nice, beautiful anodized shocks. The front aluminum shock towers. And notice the colors of the drive shafts and all of the hardware. This is some heavy duty stuff. In fact, you also have like labels on the drive shaft, says Serpent. This is like some serious race level stuff. Like usually uh, it's color coded like that on. Forgot what brand it is. But um, A2RC was telling me the other day, but I, I forgot what he said. Um, really nice giant foam bumper in the front. Let's take a look. So we have pink fuel lines. Um, what's up? The Nitro RC Addict. How you doing? Uh, pink fuel lines. I, I will say at least they are not dark and they are transparent. Our regular style buggy fuel tank. Notice the pickup at the bottom. That is beautiful. I like the bottom pickups. There's also, let me take a look inside. Is there a clunk filter in there? It's like Mike, Mike Manzo. Sorry if I don't mention some of you guys. It's just because, uh, you know, we're doing stuff. But trust me, I see you. Oh, yeah. We got a clunk style pickup fuel fuel pickup, like fit scale RCs. That's real nice. I like those. You could take them out, clean them, whatever, you know. Yeah. KGM goes, you won't see his bones brewing there. Dude, that is a good point. They must have expected the bones brew to be gone. 
sickening. Let's take a, uh, a good top-down view. So, I mean, it, it's not really a pan car. Um, it's an on-road, kind of like the GT2, right? So the engine, it says World Champion Serpent. And that is true. Serpent is a multiple-time world champion in racing from literally every single element from, like, you know, long, long ago in history. Uh, I don't really follow the racing, but it, it's true. And check out the rear shock tower. Serpent logo. Serpent logo on the back. I like that. Uh, RC Street and Sand wants to know, what is the engine size? So this is a, uh, a regular .21. Now, there is some controversy, I would say, on what engine this actually is. So you're not going to find much about it. Now, I know the older generation of this chassis came with a Novorossi because I have a buggy made by Serpent with the Novorossi in it. And the top of that cooling head said Novorossi. This one doesn't. Now, as we all know, that's because, well, Novorossi is dead from, you know, what, what we all know. But I will tell you, it seems to be exactly the same. Um, that was a pull start. This is a pull start. That one had two springs around the header. This has two springs around the header. In, in my experiences, now Bill Trude goes, it looks like a force. I don't think this is a force. Now, I know I've ran this engine in a buggy. It doesn't tune like a force engine, and it has significantly much higher RPM. Um, so it does, I, don't think, I don't think this is a force engine at all. In fact, I think this is a, a rebranded cooling head, and it's an Overossi, in, in my opinion. Right. There's no way of me obviously knowing that, but I think I think it is. Let's see what else we can take a look at. Let's take a look at the rear end. Nitro why it goes. Does oh we have a little pipe thing over here. Yeah, I don't care about that. Whatever. What am I gonna be a crybaby about a pipe thing? I'm not gonna be a crybaby. There's no crybabies here. Check out the rear end. That is some sickening diffusing. Oh, yeah. The diffs, they feel well-tuned. Let me check out the diffs tunage. Okay, so moving the wheels from left to right, I could tell the tunage is real good. It's not like a completely open diff. I don't know about the weight of the shock coil, but we do have sway bars, awesome shocks, threaded shock bodies, really wide body posts. So a regular 8-scale pan car is obviously very different from this. They, those would have significantly over-engineered shock mounts floating body mounts it will be totally different tell us this well it's the zip tie whatever we'll just leave that on for now uh really nice setup a uh, rubber feels normal eight scale buggy style wheel so you could fit like really any 17 millimeter hub on this um uh, let's take a look at this side we can take a look at um the rest of it and the two speed in general so we do have the star of the show, the two-speed transmission. Um, these use like Ace RC servos. That's like their brand basically, right? Now, I do know, yes, the Hobeo Hyper VT is a little higher optioned car because on a Hyper VT, this is aluminum. The front uh, bracket is aluminum. Here's just plastic. But other than that, really, you know, maybe some other parts on the Hyper VT a little better. But the thing is, this is cheaper now, and I, I, I like this engine more. I've ran this in a buggy, and we got a really nice high top speed with this particular one. So, yeah. Hyper VT, I, I don't like those Hobeo systems. That's kind of like the thing. I, I don't really like them. They're, they're good if you can fire them up, but you got to preheat it like crazy, guys. Like, sickeningly crazy. So, this model, the battery pack, this is not carbon fiber. It just looks like carbon fiber. It's not. Uh, it requires a 5-cell, 6-volt flat pack, just like... The Revo, right? So if you guys ordered this, you're going to need a five-cell battery pack, right? It doesn't come with a battery pack. You're going to need the battery pack. Now, check out... Let me move the filter. Filter's real nice, too. Look at that two-speed, guys. So it is plastic gears, but, you know, they're, they're pretty good pitch to me. Okay, so we have no slippage. I can move it, and it moves forward. Unlike the Kyosho GT2, which slips right out of the box. This one actually moves forward. That's, that is nice. I'm surprised already. Linkages look pretty robust. Uh, good hardware, I would say. I really like the 90-degree linkage here on the carb. Right? And a unique servo horn. I, I haven't really seen servo horns like this. 
um, really ever. Let me see what you guys are saying because I, I realize I'm not reading your comments. I'm sorry about that, but we, we are doing, you know, a once-in-a-lifetime unboxing. Let's check out the rear suspension, how it's set up out of the box. So I'm going to go down. The dampening is incredible. Definitely better than Arma's, right? The ride height is awesome. I would give this... In fact, guys, I don't have to pretend anymore. You remember last time I was looking for a caliper? I ordered a caliper. This is Amazon's cheapest, by the way. Amazon's cheapest caliper. So we could check ride height. We're going to compare this to like a 10 scale, I think, in a little bit. Um, let's, let's, let's check it out. So I'll have to like, how am I going to do this, actually? Hold on. I would have to, that's not going to work. I would have to have it on the side. Yeah. Mix RC, how you doing? Wants to know, does it have reverse? No. Um, no, no. It's it's forward only. So I think the only nitro today that has reverse, you know what? I can't really do this because like it's not. It it would be the Revo. It's not it's not at the right position. I can't really. Oh, you know what I can do? I could just put this on the block on the box flat like this. And I can just bring up uh, the chassis in the front. I'll just move it. But it's not going to be a good comparison. I I'm going to say it's about half an inch. Okay, I'm going to make an executive decision. I'm going to say it's half an inch. Oh, what's up there, Texas Hill, man? Guys, we got a good friend of mine and of the channel and his own channel, Texas Hill. Um, does great streams, positive dude. Always happy to see uh, the positive Nitro Gang here, right? Now, engine-wise, like I said, I, I don't, I cannot guarantee this is a Serpent. Uh, I mean, not... I that's not what I meant. I don't mean not a serpent. I meant no Verasi. But the only engine I know from the factory that came with like two springs like this would be a no Verasi, Um, In my opinion, right? I think. So these just got sold out, guys. So sorry about that. But um, I'm going to have to break this in in the future. It's it's pretty cold today. And it's nighttime. So I can't really break it in right now because it's like legit nighttime. Um, yeah, Dan Davidson, what's up? He goes, Serpent giving a lot for the money. That That is true, man. That is true. So what's great about this model, to be honest with you, I, I like the Point .21 engines. Point .21 engines, they rev high. Uh, they're economical. And you really don't need a Point .25, right? Like the GT2, GT2 came with a Point .25. To be honest with you, um, they were not fast. They were slow. I have a good video on the GT2. They were, they were pretty slow. But... Uh, it was a cool looking car and they were like constantly sold out and they're still sold out now. So, and by sold out, I mean, I'm back order probably for infinity forever. Right. So this filter, I like the filter. Um, nice looking white filter. Let me see if it's dual, dual layer. Yeah. It's a dual, dual layer filter. There's a second layer on the bottom there. Really nice chassis, man. Uh, there's nothing bad. I could say we have adjustable disc brakes, fiber, fiberglass disc brakes. It looks like, yeah. Bill Trude goes and the 0.25 drinks fuel. Yeah, you really don't need like a big displacement, low RPM engine. One of these, what you want is a high RPM, smaller displacement engines, right? Like a lot of racing years ago, obviously not with 12 scale, not, not with eight scale cars, but like, you know, uh, smaller cars were done with 0.12s. Now, almost nobody runs 0.12s anymore. You know, I really miss the days of the 0.12 displacement engines. They were, they were fantastic. But let's come back to this chassis for now. Uh, KGM wants to see the bottom. Yeah, we could do a little flip job, man. We could, we could flip it. For you, man, I'll flip it. All right. Stones, how you doing? We got good vibes RC. He goes, same filters as the low C. Yes, yes, very good point. These are the same filter size. Good, good point on that one. I appreciate that uh, comment. If you guys have good comments, I'll be happy to hear them, and I'm sure other people will. So the chassis is pretty mundane. Um, it's not really a pan car, right? This is basically like their converted buggy for on-road, which, which is fine because, like, let's face it. What's the Kyosho GT2? What was the Ofna Ultra GT GTP, right? Soon we're going to probably feature the Ofna GTP on the channel. I know a good friend of mine uh, recently got one. Uh, basically one of the most desirable Ofna chassis in the world ever, okay? Um, let me see. We got a question. What pokes out at the end for measurement? What does that mean? Um, so I'm going to show you guys the radio it comes with. Right, I know we all really don't like RTR radios, but like, uh, you know, it's my duty as I'm boxing it for maybe someone that cares to, to show it. So here's the radio. Uh, Brian Lawrence wants me to open the battery cover. Okay, man, I will do that. Let me get the tools. I'll do it for you. Okay, so here's the radio. It's, 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 a, it's a proper AA 
radio, like four AA batteries, right? Like whatever, it's 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 efficient. You know, it's it's not like an LCD, whatever. But 2.4 gigahertz is 2.4 gigahertz. I've I've tested these radios multiple times so far, and it has really never let me down. I will tell you the good thing about this particular radio. Um, it has actual throttle trim knobs. You know, today everything is like digital. It's hard to see where you're at. Old radios, like especially if you had HPIs, like old Futaba radios, they all had manual knobs. I love manual knobs. I love them. All right. You can't beat a manual knob. You got to have a manual knob. In fact, let me see if I can show you one. Well, I can't because I can't find one. Right? Yeah, let me show you this one. Who wants to see a manual knob? Bro, where are the manual knobs at? got one one manual knob so it's like an old radio it's uh this was either like a thunder tiger or a team associated radio back in the day you had you had knobs everywhere you know you were known as knobs that's what's up okay um what else could we really talk about here i'm not gonna open the manual or any of that but I just want to say I do like this this particular this particular radio, you know. Let's check out. Okay, there's really nothing interesting on the bottom here. I mean, all the suspension arms have the Serpent logo. It looks pretty good, uh, in my opinion. So the question was to open up the battery box to see what battery we take, right? Uh, let's let's do that. I'm gonna ask Melissa if she's watching. Melissa, if you're watching, please bring down. Uh, the, the stuff I asked you to bring. I also have a little bit of a surprise here. We have a vintage nitro engine for review. All right. So let me go back to you guys here for, for a couple minutes. We'll talk about uh, the Serpent. You know, I'm not doing a really good 100% uh, unboxing of this because I do plan on doing a proper video on this in the future. So we got Bill True goes that chassis has some serious droop tabs. Yes, I, I looked at the droop tabs are crazy, right? All right, we got Melissa here. She's going to bring us a mystery nitro engine. All right, what could it be? What could it be? A mystery nitro engine. I was trying to rehab one of those old nitro engines recently. Um, so we'll see if it's worth repairing, guys. But let me put the body on for a second so it looks good over here. But I, I am really proud of having this chassis. Um, it's been a long time since I really bought anything new. I will tell you the body fits really nicely on this when you put it on. It's looks sits beautiful. Yeah, you could put the stuff over here if you don't mind. So Melissa's gonna bring us some uh, vintage stuff. When the oil comes out, things get real. Okay, we got two engines over here. My goal is to see if I can make one. I'm not gonna show it to you in a, in a second, but give me give me about a minute. What's we got guys? over 120 people here. If you guys don't mind. Uh, you know, do the thumbs up. I don't ask much, but I'll, I'll, I'll ask for a thumbs up, you know. It's, it's fair, right? It's fair. All right. How's that one doing? Uh, Nord, Nord Squad goes as a Serpent Radio using Kyosho Radio Protocols. I hope it's not, because I don't like Kyosho Radios, man. I had runaways with those, like, two times already. Okay, I'll be honest with you. They suck. All right. The USA, well, if you guys bought a USA 1 lately, I would consider replacing a throttle servo. I had a throttle servo, weird, weird glitch, just full throttle, runaway. I uh, couldn't figure out if it was the radio, if it was the throttle servo, if it was the receiver. But I wound up just switching the throttle servo, right? I don't know, but uh, I've tested this particular radio in like three other models, and I haven't had a single issue, you know? So RC Street and saying thank you, man. All right, so I'm going to show you guys the bags of uh, engines I have in a little bit. It's actually a very significant or rare engine that people used to put into let me let me give you guys a question um it was a popular engine that people used to put into t-maxes and pretty much really any small block like rs4 at that time okay so the question is it's a brand that was popular it's it's a small block it's a 0.15 it's a 0.15 i have it here in front of me in a bag um it was a popular engine that people used to upgrade to back then it wasn't a particularly expensive engine but it wasn't a cheapo engine either right so think about it troppy feck goes how you doing uh top leaf feck bro you got me saying your username bro come on 
kidding around. Uh, OS, this this is not an OS. KGM goes 15 FE, no. Th this would have been an upgrade engine, so it would have been an, a good engine, okay, in my opinion. Um, I'm gonna show it to you right here from the bag. Mighty Mike goes Pico, I wish. I wish. A2RC goes 15 FSS, though. I wish too, man. I wish. All right, so this is the Phantom FR15. Now, I know you guys that have been in the hobby for a long time, you might have heard of the brand Phantom, right? Like, not Phantom of the Opera, but Phantom of the Nitro, okay? Uh, they had a pretty unique, you know, cross-drilled-looking cooling head. They weren't particularly that powerful, but the Phantom engine brand was um, very popular. People put these into T-Maxes uh, back when, like, the Pro 15 was a thing, right? Because this is a side exhaust engine, right? So you obviously you can't replace it you know this would not be a fit for a 2.5 or nothing like that but uh because that was rear exhaust this would have been uh, some side exhaust stuff going on all right no so my goal is to see if this is worth repairing obviously you guys could see what it's missing right go ahead tell me what it's missing it's missing two main elements well technically three main elements it's missing three main elements uh it's missing a carb but the carb um the, the carb I might be able to get away with, okay? Yeah, Mighty Bike goes, Phantom the engine in a can, yeah, right? The carb I might be able to get away with, this whole rear setup is basically the same as, like, the old HPI engines. So I should have those parts. I'm not worried about them. They use, like, a regular, you know, a one-way bearing and, like, a post order. It's, it's no big deal. Uh, it will really come down to whether it's got compression. So I think in this video, maybe later, flywheel stuff I'm not worried about. This is, like, a standard shaft. Uh, right, it's not a pilot shaft. You could tell. Normally, you put the flywheel on. Um, there's like a collet flywheel, or a, and then you put a flywheel clutch nut. It's called. You tighten it down, and then onto that, your clutch would go on. Basically, it's a completely different setup than like modern pilot shaft engines. You know, if you've never dealt with this, you you really don't need to know it. Right, I'm not like a, a professor over here. I'm just a guy with like a dead engine in my hand. Did I say dead? Is it dead? We're gonna find out. But this is a, a pretty popular old style upgrade engine from that time period uh the phantom fr15 so we'll take a look at it i also have another engine here this is a duratrax torque 16 you guys want to take a guess why why i have this engine and what i plan on doing stones man i hope so i hope because um I actually wanted to put this Phantom into like an RS-43, to be honest with you, okay? Texas Hill goes, it's a parts engine. So I'm hoping to use this carburetor from it, right? This is a rotary carb. This is like one of the really inexpensive Duratrax engines. So this was uh, a, an actual Duratrax engine. It has, believe it or not, very good compression. Like the compression, it actually is like new, okay? My, my goes, yes, I, I'm going to have to steal the carb. If, if... If it's worth saving, if it's worth saving, if it's not, then I'm gonna, we're gonna have to think about it, you know, because like not everything uh, is worth saving, but these engines are actually quite good. It has very good compression as I spin it. Oh, that, that is very good. Uh, the bearings don't feel gritty. Don't, doesn't feel like there's anything weird about it. Now notice the back. Somebody put like a, a slot in it. Obviously they were using like a flathead screwdriver to, to a drill, a flathead drill to start it, right? Not a good idea. Real bad idea. They probably, you know, broke the one-way bearing or whatever, maybe the pull starter cord and said, hey, I'm just going to do this directly. To be honest with you, it would work. There's literally, I think you guys let me know, nothing wrong with just using a drill to start it like, like that because that is basically what your one-way bearing is doing. It's just spinning a shaft. That That's all it's doing, right? Um, all that's going to happen is it's going to get obviously really dirty around here because like oil is going to drip a little bit through the center. But other than that, there's literally no, um, nothing physically wrong with doing that. So, um, yeah, Texas Hill goes, I never thought, yeah, I never thought because it's not a good idea. But, um, after I saw this, there's honestly nothing mechanically wrong with like doing this, right? Putting a slot into, um, the shaft like that. I mean, this engine still has good compression, so, like, it must have been fine, you know what I mean? It, mu it must have been fine. All right, everybody. Um, A2RC goes hybrid. You should be able to use an OS carb. 
Ideally, I would, man, ideally. But the thing is, you know, I'm not going to go and spend, um, you know, put really good parts on an engine that I think uh, we're going to have to take a look at it to see if it's got compression. So there's no glow plug in it right now. So I spun over the crankshaft. It's, it's not ideal. Um, let me see. There's a tab. There's a little paper in here. It says info, info from worth point. So there's a little paper in here. So that Phantom FR15 is 1.6 horsepower at 38,400 RPM. That seems like a make-believe number to me. I, I, I don't see this, this engine doing 1.6 horsepower. It's, I mean, I researched it. The specs do come to that. But I, I don't see it being uh, 1.6 horsepower. I, I, I don't see it. All right. Um, this engine was donated to me a long time ago, by the way, by a friend of mine, Brian Schumann. I uh, invited him to the stream. I don't know if he's here right now. Or did I invite him? I don't know if I did. But let me see. So he wrote me a little letter over here. All right, guys. It's good to have people that appreciate, you know, nitros. So he wrote a little letter. He goes, Phantom FR15. A very sought-after race engine from the 90s. For display purposes, I do not believe it runs. Thought you would find it interesting. Nitro on my dude. Yes, uh, Brian Schumann, a good friend of mine. Um, it's helped out the channel tremendously over the years. And uh, you never want to forget the people that help you guys. But you also want to forget the people that try to take you down, all right? Not one of those. So, um, just for display purposes, you know, so he didn't make any guarantees on how good this is, how bad it is. But there, there's no glow plug in there right now. We'll, um, we'll, we'll see what we got, right? Now, I, I could spin it. It's not, it's not, like, seized. I think these might have been ABN engines. These are probably not even ABC engines. So we'll take a look at it maybe if I have time today. But right now the request is to take a look at the battery. Is that correct? To remove uh, the battery cover because um, for some reason today, like everyone thinks cars come with batteries. But like literally, um, Hobeos don't even come with battery packs. You need the same battery pack in a Hobeo. So like, how are you going to be mad at it? You know, don't, don't be mad at it. It's, it's a logical thing to, to, to do. Okay, guys. So, um... You want to keep looking at it, okay? Or what? Okay. So Texas Hill goes, yes, let's examine the battery compartment. People love batteries, man. Sick. Okay. Yeah. HBI Savages don't even come with batteries, goes Dodger Boy. Exactly. And, like, no one cares about that, you know? Pull out a nitro with no battery, people, like, freak out. All right. So, um, by the way... If you want to order this, um, you could still use the link and order it. Obviously, it, it, you know, it's, it's on back order now because, like, well, you know, sold out. But you can still order it. It will still ship uh, eventually, right? I, I would recommend you do that. Now, the link is in the description of this video and a coupon code just for you, bro. Okay, guys. So thank you all for being here once again. You know, you always got to appreciate the people that make you what you are. You know, some people would say... Thank you, George Bush. And I think compared to today's political condition, we would we would support George Bush. So let's take the body off again and get down to the battery box. Let me do a little zoom in from the top view. Really nice chassis setup, to be honest with you. Two-speed spins really free. I don't notice any, like, ju just so you guys know, I looked over it before. I don't notice any defects in the fit and finish. It appears to be very good. All right, so the battery box over here. Hold on a second. What kind of screw is this? Is this SAE? No, okay, I'm incorrect. So the battery box screw is a 1.5 millimeter. Why would they do 1.5 millimeter? Are they, are they in bed with Losi? They're in bed with Losi. All right. Oh, man. That, it's going to take me forever to unscrew this. 1.5 millimeter. But they're pretty good quality, though. They are cap head screws, though. A little long, in my opinion. Oh, man. They gave you some relatively average long screws for the battery box.
Nitro Power 2025, how you doing? We got a good question from you. Uh, as I do this, I'm just going to read some of your guys' comments because I appreciate you talking there. All right. Good vibes go serpent got some of the tightest screws. Yeah, dude, these are tight as hell, bro. Um, so question is, where can I buy a Nitro RC HSP 1.8 scale monster truck? Um, I don't know why you would want to buy that, to be honest with you. Um, tell us what, what other options you might have. Like, are you outside of America? If you're outside of America, then basically we all have different, like, you know, brands. But if you're like, dude, this is like the world's tightest screw over here. It's pretty good quality, though. The machining. I notice this screw's obstructed by the servo linkage. But we'll get it on and we'll move it. It should be able to just slide up. Uh, Nitro Squad goes, have I seen the new Radio uh, Mass MT-12? I, I am not sure. I am not sure. That seems like a brand uh, I, I am unfamiliar with. You know, if I don't know it, I'll, I'll say it, man. Um, but then again, it's probably... I'll, I'll try to look it up in a little for you, okay? Right, so four screws in total. The battery box is open. Let me see. We're going to just move this. I'll just move this. Let's see if we can lift. I think it's like one of those side lift situations. Oh, yeah. It's fine. Before I lose the screw, let me just take it out. All right. Yeah, Serpent Screw Gang is uh, pretty pretty hardcore over here. All right. So pretty normal battery box. Lifted that out. Pretty good space. From the top view. There you go. Yeah, so you're going to need a, uh, a regular Futaba-style five-cell five cell battery. Yeah, no funny business here, really. Pretty good hardware. All, it looks like it's bearing supported, all the linkages. Let me just test out. Oh, yeah. That is some sickening brake jobs. You know, it appears... We do not have front to rear brake adjustment. It appears this is like a standard linkage that looks like it has adjustable brake bias, but it doesn't. I, I kind of like it. I honestly don't like front to rear adjustable brake bias. I like when it's solid. So let's see, there's like a link right here that moves the disc brake for, um, equally on both of these discs. Let me just move it with my hand. Honestly, kind of a nice setup right here. I've never seen that really. All right? What do you guys think about that? Yeah, Texas Hill likes these disc brakes. Really nice. Also notice you have you have springs holding the calipers open. That's that is a nice touch right there. That is a nice touch. That is a nice touch. I know the thing is I find whenever you have adjustable brake bias, the thing is I, I drive a lot in like an oval. So if I'm basically doing a lot of throttle brake and turning in one direction. I don't want one side of the wheel to wear unevenly. And that, that is what will happen, right? Like with adjustable brake bias over time. Of course, if you're driving in dirt, that would probably be a good idea. Uh, but yeah, really interesting setup when I open up the brakes. It all moves together. Right? So you have even brake to front and rear disc brakes. Man, this is my favorite part. The fact that the disc brakes have springs over here. This is actually a mod that like racers used to do long ago. When you had disc brakes that were just kind of floating, that's what they're called. So when you have the calipers, they float over the disc brake. Um, you really should have little springs in there. People like use springs from, you know, like a ballpoint pen. So a little word of advice that that is a good idea right there. Um, yeah, guys, it's super foggy where we live right now. Like super, super foggy. Uh, foggier than like, you know, we're not going to say foggier than what, but pretty good setup. Nice battery cover right here. Let me go see if I have a, a five cell battery pack just so we can test out um, the fit. And guys, thank you for being here, by the way. Um, give this video a like if you can, support it in any way possible, you know. Uh, but never forget, make Nitro great again how you can. Let me go see if I can get a battery pack so pe people know like what this takes.
Well, bad news, everybody. I don't have a flat battery pack. Uh, I'm going to have to buy one, actually. Don't have a flat battery pack. But I'll just show you that this one won't work. This is like a regular Savage-style battery, right? It does, you can't use this. It's called a hump pack because it's a hump. Uh, you need a flat battery pack, so this is not going to work. Damn it. So I'm going to have to order one. I thought I had one, but I remember I was doing that low-C LST repair, and I must have used it in the low-C LST. So that's a bad idea. Can't use that anymore. All right, we're going to put this back together. Um, what else we can take a look at here? Pretty nice looking out drives all around. Oh, making a lot of noise over there. Suspension is beautiful. Drive shafts. Take a look at those drive shafts. Look at that anodizing on them, the, the brown color. That is nice. Look at those gears. It's a pretty serious car. By the way, all of this stuff, um, they also have pro parts. They, you can get any of this in carbon fiber. So let me put this back for now. So I can't even really do a break-in right now. Yeah, Michael Sucha, how you doing? Yeah, no notifications. I know, man. I don't really mention it anymore, man. But, you know, all I can do is post the link in the Nitro Game Facebook group. Hope people see it. And, um, you know, buy, buy Nitros. Oh, we got Pitbull air-cooled. How you doing, my bro? Um, you know, right now, this uh, for those of you guys just coming in, we're taking a look at the battery tray on this Serpent. They're all sold out now, but, you know, I did put a link to it. If you guys want to place an order, it'll just be on a back order for a while. It'll probably three days. I know we had a viewer earlier say they... Uh, Put, they place an order on back order and they still were able to get it. So don't let the back order thing kind of scare you, you know? But I, I'm happy with this purchase. Um, you know, I didn't get to get a GT2 when they were out, but I did do a couple break-in videos on, G, on the GT2s. And I will tell you they're very good looking cars. But in terms of performance, unless you're getting like a nice rev, high revving engine... Good luck going over 35. They're, they're not fast. You know, that's that's what I will say. The GT2s are not very fast. One point five millimeter screws they use for the battery box. Why would they do that? Like they should want it looks like they never owned the low CLST. But pretty nice uh, setup for what it is. Sway bars, front and rear. Large capacity fuel tank. For those of you just coming in, let me show you this side. This is the, the fun side, as they called it. You know, the engine side. Oh, Pitbull Air Cool, bro. Thank you for that channel donation. I appreciate that, man. That's going to go towards a battery pack for this car because, like... I didn't even buy a battery pack, unfortunately. I should have placed the order together. <coughs> so, thank you, Pitbull Air Cooled. Uh, by the way, guys, a little update on the Nitro Gang uh, giveaway. I am working on it. I just had a couple of, uh, you know, uh, well, well, you know, situations going down. But there will be a giveaway on the HPI Firestorm uh, for channel members in the near future. Definitely within this month, right? But... You know, I don't want to be held accountable for things I say people down the future be like, oh, he said he's going to do this, he's going to do that. Listen, I'm not obligated to do it. You know, I do it out of uh, the support for the hobby, support for the channel, and um, I'm happy to do it. Anyway, nice chassis. We will break this in when I get the battery pack. Awesome suspension. I would say the fit and finish out of the box is remarkable. Ride height is very good. You even have some extra ride height if you want to go a little rally level, right? I just saw today Traxxas um, announced the new Traxxas VXL Rally. Well, it's basically a rebranded, re you know, what, what is it? Rebranded, like, Slash. Let's face it. The Traxxas Slash has been made into more cars than, um, well, women into, um, you know, what, what do I want to call it? Women into uh, only OnlyFans people, right? Oh, John Hensley. Thank you for that, man. Appreciate that. Uh, channel support always not bad, but for real, uh, what did I say about the OnlyFans things? I, I can't believe those websites are actually even exist.
can't believe people could actually do that. But it's it's real sickening to be honest with you. But whatever, you know, I'm not here to uh, hate or hate on them. But you know, yeah, they definitely tried to kill something, man. So we're gonna get down to um, the Phantom Engine that I have. If you guys weren't here, I just want to discuss a little something before we continue, right, with the Serpent. I had a good question before, and people that just joined in, right, maybe you guys want to hear a little opinion of mine. The question was, this or the, the Hobeo Hyper-VT? Now, I have videos on the Hyper-VT, and I love the Hyper-VT chassis if you can get a two-speed to shift. But what I don't really particularly love on the Hyper-VT, and I have an example here for us. What I really didn't like on the Hyper VT was this engine. Um, you know, on paper, this is a powerhouse. Oh, what's up, John Hensley? Oh, did I already say hello to you? I forgot. Oh, yeah, I did. Sorry, my bad, bro. Um, on paper, the Hyper 30 is a powerhouse, right? But let, let's let's think of all the bad things, right? Let's think of all the bad things. Turbo glow plug. You need a turbo. The compression is insane. Um, what, what, what else is there? Uh, made in Taiwan. I mean that that's fine. The carb on these is is probably one of the world's worst. We do have a mid speed needle here as well. So this carb is a is a three needle carb. We have the low speed, we have the high speed, and we have the mid speed. Generally, you don't even touch mid speed. Yeah, Taiwan is good. I wasn't I wasn't making fun of Taiwan. Um, Taiwan is good, guys. I was I was actually that that's not bad. You want Italy, but number two, you want Taiwan. You know, yeah, pandaphobia goes, the cop starting is crap, right? So the logic with this pull starter, it's actually pretty clever. If you've never come across these engines, um, yeah, Pitbull Air Cooled likes the Serpent. It's, it's honestly beautiful. I'm going to compare this to something else in a little. Uh, just give me a minute. So the logic with these Hobeo engines, with the cop's pull starter, so if you read it, it's called Crank Off Pull Starter. Um, so the logic is when... Normally, what, what's the reason that people like non pull start engines, right? It's because the starting shaft doesn't have to drag a bearing. That's the logic. You get like a 3% advantage. What's up there, Atomic Energy? Yes, man. Um, finally, my Serpent is here. You know, I'm, 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 I'm happy about it. Well, right now, we're just talking about the engines, right? I already like showed it a little bit. I might do it in a little bit. So, crank off pull starter. Uh, the logic is you get a little more RPM if your starting shaft is not dragging a bearing in the back, right? That, that's the logic. To be honest with you, it's like a 3% difference in RPM. It's, it's, it's minimal. You know, when you're talking about like a 30,000 RPM engine or something, that's not even a 1,000, right? Because that would be not that. Anyway, um, also these whole pull starters would like break all the time. Anyways, we'll, we'll get rid of this one right now. I was going to put this in something, but whatever. I'm not going to do it right now. Man, we don't got no Hobeo pull starter love right here. I, I, don't, I don't feel the love at all. Got zero pull starter love. Okay, so the Serpent is here. What, what did I want to do? Um, white boy, how you doing, man? He goes, I have a Hyper 28 with a regular pull starter. I think you're talking about a Max Star 28, right? Am I correct, Max Star? The Max Star engines are quite quite awesome, to be honest with you. I don't, I'm not a big fan of the Hyper 30. Uh, in my experience, and you know, I could be incorrect, but the chance of that is like low. But once again, you should also also always have like a little bit of a rate of error uh, to, to show that you're not, you know, infallible. You know, when you think you're infallible, it's not good. That's when problems happen. But I will say, yeah, good vibes RC goes. Good engine with shitty carb O-rings. Exactly. It, it, the carb is bad. Like you're guaranteed to need a new carb in that one. But uh, I can guarantee right now, guys, I've ran this engine multiple times. Not in this car, in a different one. These are fantastic serpent engines. Fantastic. They're not serpent engines, but mm, whatever they are, they're, they're engines, right? Uh, you know, we can't can't really know what what things are these days. But uh, also super super tight. Yeah. Good luck starting the Hyper Thirty. You you will need like two quarts to break it in. You know. Okay, let's continue, everybody. So, I think at this point we're gonna probably uh, what did I say I want to do with the serpent? I forgot. I got a little bit of box damage in the front here. It's not. I'm not very happy about it. Well, Melissa actually saw it before, but like, what, whatever, you know. It looks like the radio. Um, the way it was boxed, the radio, the wheel hit this. 
Because like when I took the when I took the radio out, this piece of foam was 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 off. So whatever. <coughs> I'm not gonna complain about it. Yeah, atomic energy goes sizzles messed up in the same spot, bro. So it's all of us, right? <laughs> yeah, it, their packaging is not very good for that, but whatever. At first, I was like, it's just you know the outside like plastic covering because like there's plastic over the film here, f plastic film over the body, but it's it's actually all of it. Man, I gotta say, this is a good looking chassis. So let, let me compare. You guys want me to compare this to something? Tell me what car you want me to compare it to. I'll compare it to something. Yeah. Yeah, Texas Hill, yes, you're right. I fixed many one way bearings. To be honest with you, sometimes when they're like super bad, you should just get a new one. The fixing works. Okay, the question uh, Lotus 420 wants to compare it to the Integra. All right, man, let me do that. I gotta, I gotta clear up a lot of table space then, dude. You know, I gotta clear up the table space. Yeah, Atomic Energy, that's what I expected. I was actually going to put, like, the Serpent sticker on top over here, you know? Look look at all these stickers uh, that it came with. So I figured one of these stickers would look okay. Probably not the really enormous one. Probably the SRX G, G uh, one, one of those, you know? And the front. Maybe a bigger one. Maybe I'll just put, like, I mean, most of it will be still noticeable, but maybe this part I can cover up. What do you guys think? Would it look okay with the Serpent sticker on the front? Yeah, probably like that big SRX GT. No, it needs like a symmetrical sticker. So it definitely needs this one. Definitely needs that one. All right. So, I mean, I'm happy. I'm not going to complain about this. I, I got a good deal on it, you know. Th these cars are pretty expensive. Um, there was a small coupon. Like, uh, I'm pretty satisfied with it. So let's compare it to another car. Oh, Pro right there. Right there, this is a pan car. Floating body post, 1998 tech. That's a chassis. And that is a chassis. Let me put them down side by side. Need to get a little table space, guys. Hold up. Yeah, this, this chassis hella thick, man. Let me put it down somewhere yeah good comment there maybe we can heat the body that's something i gotta consider also good point all right bro this this thing has taken the entire table hold on i don't think i have anywhere to put the integra hold on all right we have moved this let me put the integra next to it Dude, I, I, I actually think the Serpent's bigger. Holy moly. Oh, wow. Hold on. Let me get a good view now. I think, uh... Guys, it seems the Serpent is actually bigger. So I have them lined up in the back, side by side in the back. The Serpent is wider and fatter. So these are, like, not real, you know, raw race cars. The, these are not... This one on the right, like, it's it's all to spec, right? Everything here is to spec. It's not... You can't really compare them. Um, these are quick... Quick release wheels. Yeah, this Porsche is real nice. People love this one. This is real original, too. You know, these are, like, quick release wheels. They're foam. Uh, these are buggy-style 17mm hub wheels. They're, they're not comparable. This was, I think, a thousand dollar kit car, right? Well, maybe not a thousand, but I honestly don't even know how much this was brand new. There's like almost no information from it. It's 1998 over here, but they're not even really comparable. These have floating body mounts. Um, this is basically a buggy, right? You guys want to see under the body or what? Yeah, good point there, Atomic Energy. I was actually looking for the sticker they have on the box. I also couldn't find it. I was like, where did they get that sticker? All right, so let's take the body off on some of them. Yeah, the, these are not really even comparable. They're different level cars completely. This is, you know, this is state-of-the-art stuff right here, man. Integra, 
that's the brand that actually uh, made by Pico. So Pico, the engine brand, also had a chassis. This is their chassis. Very, very rare. Um, very, very rare. Let's remove this body. This is probably my nicest vintage chassis, the, the Pico and Tecla. But like I said, they're, they're not really even comparable, right? If I put them wheelbase to wheelbase, wheel to wheel, you could see right there, you know, the Serpent is a larger car. They're, they're not really even comparable. This is, this is made to race in like spec racing, you know, particularly roar, roar racing. <coughs> oh. Good comment here from Texas Hill. Yeah, Serpent um, Vector is basically exactly the same as this. Let's take a look from the top-down view. So, obviously, the layout is completely unique, right? This is a .21 class engine. It's a, this one's actually, like, like brand new. Super smooth gearing. Nothing wrong with literally anything. Floating body mounts. So, let's say you're pushing the suspension down. You see that? Suspension moves. The body posts, they remain flat. That's that's what I mean when I say floating body mounts. They don't move, right? So this is a proper eight-scale pan car. Um, but this is more of a buggy-based road car. They're, they're not the same. This is called like a GT car, like a Grand Touring car. Let's take a look at um, the chassis maybe, right? Okay, here we go. I'll show you guys. They're, they're completely different. You can't really compare them. But this is for sure my nicest nitro. Ooh. And this one fires up only with a starter box, by the way. You can't start it in any other way. This is the nicest one. Look, look at those chassis cutouts. Obviously, the chassis on this one is, is much fatter. This seems to be a 5 millimeter. Oh, you know what we can do? We could check it now, too. Unfortunately, guys, I don't have a GT2, so I can't compare it to the GT2. Yeah, I left fuel in it. It's it's no big deal. It's bone. It's old bones brew with this colors, but I, this fires up like no problem. I'm not sure what servo it uses, but it's basically like a regular servo. All right, let's check out the thickness. Okay. Yep. It's going to lock in. Hold on. I'm, I'm just vibrating it, so it's hard for me to uh, to do it. Let me put the phone holder and I can't do it like this. So I'll show you guys this chassis. Yeah, th this, one, this one is basically very incredible. This is probably the nicest vintage pan car that, that I and m many people own, in my opinion, you know? Oh, Stones is taking out his HPI Vorza Truggy. Dude, I got to get that one day. I got to get that one day. Yeah, good point there, Atomic Energy. There's literally no, no, no problem that happens when you leave the fuel in. You know, if I leave it in, like, worst case scenario, I'll just, like, clean it out. You know, I'll remove the fuel line, blow through the exhaust, it'll, it'll come out, whatever. It's literally no big deal. Let me test this chassis, as I said. Damn, where, where can I get a proper chassis fit? This is... Hold on, I gotta get a better area to fit the chassis tester. I think this is five millimeters. So it seems the world's cheapest uh, caliper also doesn't hold very well. Yeah, so here we go. Let me tighten it up. You can't see because I'm doing it in the light. Okay, here we go. So it's basically, I'll do it again. Basically five millimeters. So I was pushing it. It's plastic, so it bends a little bit. But it's it's five millimeters basically. That is that is fat. Yeah, it's five mil. Right. Yeah. When I moved it out, it moved a little bit. Basically five millimeters. Yeah. This thing is sickening. The shocks are incredible too. Now this one. It's probably three millimeters. Yeah, let's check the serpent. It's probably three. But like, you know, buggy chassis don't really have more than that usually. 
It's probably at best three. Let me just... All right. Yeah, it's, it's basically three millimeters on the Serpent. It's three mil. Gavin Williams, you got to order this road car, bro. That, that will make you happy. They, they, these are totally different, you know? Like, obviously, even if you look at it this way, look how much wider the Serpent is when they're in this position. It's, it's, it's not really even comparable, you know? It's kind of like a buggy base chassis. But it's still fantastic, in my opinion. For, for the money, right? You got to understand, guys, to build this uh, Pico Integra, this is probably... Um, what do you guys think? A $1,500 car, maybe, at that time period? You know, all in, this is probably a $1,500 car at that time period, I would say. So the kit would have been probably $800. You know, we're talking about 1998. So in today's money, it would have been hella more. Right, let's see. I even have the box for it. So I'll show you guys right there. There's the box for it. You see that blue box? That's the original box from it. Right, look at that beautiful box art. We all know we love boxes. Sickening. All right, so um, we could compare these to any other RC. You guys want to pick one or something or or what? Just size-wise. Oh, you know what? You can compare it to um, an old RC, RC8, RC500. Yeah, RC500. <clears throat> Yeah, this would have been, this Pico Integra would have been a super state-of-the-art chassis, right? Like, look, look at that suspension. You see that? When you press down on it, the entire chassis moves, the engine, everything moves, but the body posts remain the same. This is essentially the same technology as in, like, the serpents of today, right? Look at that thick belt. Tell me that is not the thickest belt you've, you've seen. I think Schumachers have thicker belts. But for on roads, they really don't have thicker belts. Uh, we got front one way here. Um, it's 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 a completely different design, you know. This probably at its peak was a track killer, right? Track killer. We have quick disconnect wheels. Although to be honest with you, if you want to disconnect the wheels, you gotta like almost kill your thumb. Let me see if I can do it quick over here. Oh, let's do it. Let's see. Oh shit, I was incorrect. Quick disconnect wheel. See that? Everything is on, on this chassis is beautiful. Look, look at that machining. You see? It's basically a clip. You clip it in, it keeps the wheel in. Look at that machining. Giant bearings. These are like literally the world's giantest bearings I, I've seen in like one of these cars. Very nice parts quality. Uh, everything is it's, it's state of the art, you know, race technology right here. So when you put it back in, basically got to push it and hope it fits into, um, fits into the wheel. You got to really really squeeze it in there so you gotta hope that that thing fits into a proper position if i even remember how to do it oh yeah here we go it's locked that's it all right and squeeze it all the way oh no it's locked it's locked yeah front also same thing quick disconnect pico engine uh this is the you know, the engine that this manufacturer would have included in this car, just so you guys know. Front also has the quick disconnect. But, to be honest with you, it's hella hard to remove it, probably because it's old. You gotta, like, push it and then slide out at the same time. Oh, my God. Oh, there we go. So, you know, once again, beautiful machining work everywhere. Right? Foams. I don't know what short this is. But... It's uh, significantly nice. This is literally a 1990s chassis. You gotta like shove it in there real, real crazy. The time I did this, I had to like smack it. Ugh. Ugh. See how you, someone, I need some smack job over here. Wants to come smack this. Akon. You guys remember Akon? Smack that. There we go. Smacked it. You see that? Now it's locked in. All you needed is just smack it like Akon. You know? 
All right, so that's basically this chassis. We also have a um, another chassis I could show you. Which is my RC500. Um, very proud of it. Yeah, Akon Smack that was on. It was literally every single uh, song on, on the radio for like a year. I mean, I don't know. It wasn't even good. It was quite a quite a bad song. All right. So next up, we got the RC500. I, I ran out of table space, guys. Literally ran out of table space. So this is the RC500. This is the oldest one of these. Um, I think this is 1987. 1987. But once again, this is an eight scale pan car. It's the same spec dimensions as that Pico Integra. You know, the, this is not the original engine, obviously. So this is basically the same. This this is the oldest pan car that I have. These were only single speed at that time period. Let me show you the bottom. The bottom is uh, very unique. Not at all like a modern chassis because this is, you know, we're talking 80s. You know, at this time, the engine was generally bolted to a, to a really thick metal chassis. And this, this appears to be 5 millimeters right here. Yeah, A2 RC goes on this nice trio. Yeah, bro, thank you. <coughs> the rest of the car was generally just like a fiberglass material. Which is okay because it flexed enough. It flexed enough. But, you know, the way RCs were designed at this time period was, was completely different. I don't know why all the parts were white, to be honest with you. It, I don't know why they thought white was good, but like it was very common. But really, if you look at the layout here, it's it's not much different than like a modern pan car, right? You have steering system in the front, you know, it's basically the same same thing. Engine is mounted in the same position, if you notice, right? Engine is mounted in the same position. Mm, I don't know what else to really could say about it, but this one this one could be a runner. It also has the quick release uh, wheels, but kind of an older style system. Let's see if we can um, put the battery on it. No, I mean put the body on that one. We'll take a look. So this is for sure my rarest Nitro. Um, very proud of it. I I paid a lot of money for this one. Like, like we're talking a lot. All right. Oh, we got Mark Messenger, man. How you doing? Happy to see you here. Um, everybody's always welcome on this channel, you know. I understand if people have to leave for a little while. That's all good, man. Love you guys, all right? We love you guys. So let me see if I can put the body on maybe that Integra and we can check out the way it would look. Then I'll put them away. But you understand to run something like this and to run something like that is not the same as running the Serp and they're, they're totally different cars. There's nothing wrong with any of them. There's nothing wrong with any of these. These are literally ideal. They're, they're actually literally the same size, both of them. If I back it up, they're, they're the same size. Now, if you're asking how come this isn't painted, this was like basically race, race spec back then. They had to see everything you were running. So engine here is not original. It's like some kind of Banggood engine, but like whatever. Uh, that Pico fires up beautifully, though. There's literally nothing wrong with it. All right, guys, I'm going to put these away, and uh, we'll close up. The serpent. <clears throat> Give me a second here. Appreciate you guys being here right now. If you're trying to order the Serpent, guys, you could still get it. Like, they're, they're, they're already sold out. They're on back order right now. But, like, from what I've seen, they're usually in stock within, like, three days again. So, like, literally, um, I, I wouldn't worry. Uh, let me put the body back on this one. Gotta say, man, I, I love the way the body fits. Uh, I like the really wide rear body posts. That is a nice touch right there. Stones, man, thank you. I appreciate you being here. Um, 
you guys might have seen my video this past, what was it, like a day ago or something? Two days ago? It was the Traxxas Nitro Rustler. If you haven't seen it, like, go check it out. I'm probably going to have another Nitro Rustler video in the future. Let me put this away now. Got over a hundred people. Yeah, Atomic Energy here says uh, he ordered his on back order and they had it in less than a week. So I'm telling you guys, if it's sold out, like don't worry about it. I would still order it. You're not gonna get like this kind of car at this value, like pretty much anywhere ever. You know, this this is pretty much a sickening chassis. Oh man, and. You know, at first I was like, do I like the color combination? I'm not sure, but I kind of like it. I kind of like it. Atomic Energy, bro. Um, you should get the Nitro Rustler. Nitro Rustler is a great chassis. It's it's highly underrated. Like one speed, I'm telling you, is all you need. And A-Main has them for like 335 So if you click like any of the links in the description of this video and you want to order it, I'll, uh, I'll be happy if you do, you know? All right. Oh, right. Uh, John Hensley goes, I like the wheels. Yeah, these are pretty nice, like, 8 scale. They're really not any different from, like, the old GT2. All these kind of buggy-based chassis have these kind of wheels. Not, nothing that ex exceptional here, but they're, they're functional. They're good. And the, the best thing is replacement ones will be really, really cheap, you know? Yeah, Stones goes, it's nice to see a body that fits. I agree. Um, the good thing is a -Main has like literally a bunch of parts for these, which, which is, uh, pretty good. This is not a brand that really is sold everywhere else, right? Serpent does have a Serpent website uh, on their own, but the thing is you're going to pay crazy shipping. I, I checked already, right? Actually, somebody told me to order it on the Serpent website and I looked, but, um, you know, they kind of sell like a lot of brands there. It's not just this brand. So it really isn't, you know, yeah. Yeah, Atomic Energy goes, yes, you got to use the $30 coupon. Uh, but I think Traxxas doesn't let you use um, coupons on A-Main. I think the Traxxas brand in general. Let me see. I'm going to look it, up, look it up right now. I think the Traxxas uh, RCs on A-Main, you can't use coupons for because they're already basically like, you know, bottom of the barrel there, like price-wise. Let me, let me just check. So we'll go to Kits. Nitro. And by the way, any link you click, um, I'll be happy if you buy anything, guys. You know, it doesn't it doesn't have to be the product. So this Nitro Slash is also an awesome pick, 350. So Nitro Rustler. Let's scroll to it. Too bad this Kyosho of W6 is sold out. Where's the Nitro Rustler? Okay, here we go. So 334 for the Nitro Rustler. But, you know, it says right here, manufacturer does not allow coupons. So it's pretty much common. Like, even on the Traxxas websites, they, you know, they really don't have coupons for these. Like, I've never seen Traxxas with coupons. Only their electrics, you know. Yeah, Atomic Energy goes Nitro Slash with my first RC. Bro, that's a great chassis. In fact, I would pick the Nitro Slash over the Nitro Rustler, you know. Oh, was this? Is that clearance? Ah, uh, WR8 is sold out. See price and cart. Serpent Viper 990. I'm afraid to see the price and cart, guys. I'm not going to do it. Um, What else we got here? Revo. We got T-Maxes. T-Max is a great truck. All right, let's go back to uh, the chassis, so to say. What time is it right now? 10 o'clock. All right, guys, um, I could do one more topic with the engine, and then we're going to call it a night. You know, it's been a long night for me. Melissa and I got to go get something to eat. We're hungry. But I was uh, happy to be able to bring you some interesting content, at least, with the Serpent. <clears throat> Let's put it in the back right there. There's someone sick here. I heard someone sick. 
yeah, Atomic Energy. We might go get Wendy's tonight, actually. I don't think we're going to get uh, Taco Bell. It's a little far from us today. But I think it's going to be a Wendy's night. Melissa will decide. All right. I see people talking about fuel over here. Um, you know, with the fuel, unfortunately, I, I would recommend VP is the best. There's many good fuels. There's, there's many good fuels. It really comes down to your tune. But VP is very good. It has never let me down. Where, where did I put those engines? Okay. So the topic, uh, the secondary topic I have, I don't know how long we're going to do this for. But, you know, I appreciate you guys being here. If you haven't given this video a thumbs up, please, like, you know, help a brother out over here. All right. Oh, I'm sad to hear that Mark Messenger over here uh, with his back issues, man. Pain, pain is bad, you know. All right, so for those of you that haven't seen, um, I was sent this engine a while ago. This is a Phantom FR-15, a very popular engine that people used to stick into T-Maxes. They were known for their cross-drilled, you know, drilled rather. It's not cross-drilled, it's just drilled. Uh, cooling head like that, you know. Man, pain is bad, I know. Pain is bad. I was just actually watching this, like, um, boxing documentary today. I forgot what the guy's name is. I think his last name is Campos. He was a boxer uh, from Puerto Rico. And I guess he was hit in the back of the head a couple times during his match. And, you know, he had, like, a brain hemorrhage. He was rushed to the hospital. And, uh, you know, he's basically in a vegetative state now. Anybody's aware of this guy? You know, it was probably the most crooked boxing match ever. You know, DC, cool. Thank you, man. And Mark Messenger, man, um, of course we all care, you know. Um, we're not just saying that. It's Pain is bad. To be honest with you, like when I have a cold, I can't even do a video. You know, so, but that's just a cold. I, I can't imagine what, what you have, you know. And uh, we talk, you know, offline too, really. Let me see what Atomic Energy is saying. Uh, he goes, hi, bro. I'm having issues with my FW06. Can't figure it out. Can I send it to you to check it out? You know, you can. I'll, 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 I'll be happy to look at it. Nothing wrong with that, man. Um, you know, good video content for me as well. You know, I don't mind helping people out. So Atomic Energy, um, you have my email, right? I mean, it's just my email. It's, it's literally my YouTube username. Hybrid32494 at Hotmail.com. Yeah, so you could send it to me. I'll take a look at it, whatever it is, you know. Uh, you know, obviously no, no, no money, you know, free. Um, you know, I didn't start this channel to make money, but it does help to buy stuff, right? <laughs> but, but like obviously free. Okay, so let's all uh, take a look at it. Now, this is the old... Phantom engine, a uh, very popular engine for T-Maxes at the time. They, they claim it was 1.6 horsepower. I, I don't see how they got 1.6 horsepower out of this. Yeah, Atomic Energy, bro, I'll, I'll check, you know, in a little while. You Gavin Williams, bro, sorry, it takes me a little while to respond to you, but I have the emails, don't worry, you know. Uh, appreciate you guys' viewership. You know, without you, you know, I truly would be would be nothing, right? Like long ago when I worked in, let's say, sales, right? The first thing you learn in sales uh, without your customer, you got no job. You know, th this isn't really a job. This is, this is you know, all of our hobby. But once again, you know, we, you, know you, you need viewers. A creator needs viewers. And um, viewers need a creator. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of a cyclical, cyclical thing, you know. Yeah, Texas Hill goes, they got Bidenomics. Because, yeah, they claim 1.6 hor horsepower. There's no way. So uh, what do you guys want me to do? I'm, I'm telling you right now, there's no glow plug in it. I can remove the head real quick. We could take a look inside. You want me to do that? I'm not going to be here much longer. Or um, we'll just remove the head quick, you know. We'll take a little look inside. Damn, Melissa, you hungry? I'm hungry already. We'll just take a look inside, see if it's like worth it. Hold on, there's no screw in that one. Uh-oh. Matthew Irwin, what's up, bro? There's no screw in that one. We're missing a screw figures Anthony Bernardi bro thank you for being a channel member uh, means a lot to me as I let me read your comments see what you said uh, he goes I bought a used HPI Savage and a Savage SS I have the finned bottom engine diffuser that comes with the SS I was it was someone's project can I email you Need help finding parts. Um, what, what parts are you looking for? So it's a Savage, right? I mean, you could find parts for a Savage. It shouldn't be a problem. Well, tell us what, right now what, what you think you need, and we'll we'll let you know. You know, I don't want, like, 
people sending me too much or like big big stuff. You know, shipping is not cheap. Like FW six, the shipping will be not much. So that that's not a bad idea. But you know, I don't want people like sending me. You guys know this 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 like not my job, right? But um, I do like helping people out. Okay, let me see what we got over here. So tell us what what parts you need. I mean, you shouldn't really have a problem finding parts for a Savage. Okay. Ah, oh, there's still one screw over here. I forgot. Yeah, right here. There's one screw. So I'll, I'm gonna see. Uh, I can get a carb for this. It's not. It's not a big deal. All right. So. Let me bring this a little closer. We'll take a look at it under some better lighting conditions here. All right, so first view. Um, oh, okay, so we got a good comment here from Anthony. Uh, he goes, can I send you pictures? He mixed up between SS and XL. I don't know what to turn it to. Uh, if you want to send me some pictures right now, I'll check like in the next few minutes through my email. You know, hybrid three two four nine four hotmail dot com. Like while people are here, maybe we could all uh, give you some advice. You know, Tara Curry, thank you, man. I'm glad you were here for the stream. Uh, it's going on a little longer, but you know, Serpent sold out. I gotta like, you know, I figured let's show people some vintage engine stuff. You know, so um, yeah, you could send me a picture. I'll, I'll take a look at it like right now. Hopefully, we can help you out. You know, um, so okay, what do we got here? Well, my first, my first impression is this is for sure an ABN engine. It does not seem to be the color that ABC sleeves are. Yeah. All right, so I don't see any kind of weird scoring on a... Oh, no. That doesn't look too good. Hmm. All right, so there's a one oil ring there on top. As I move it through the entire stroke, I don't really feel anything at the top. What do you guys think? What do you want me to do? You want me to remove the back plate quick? This this might be dead. Um, it might be dead. Let me take a look at my email real quick first. Okay, so, so far, no emails from anybody. Oh, Atomic Energy, bro. Thank you for that. <coughs> uh, pr appreciate having you here, man. Go for some extra fries and Wendy's tonight. <laughs> no problem, man. Thank you. Melissa and I appreciate it. Um, most of it is going to go towards our seats, though. But, you know, the fries also, of course. Guys, to be honest with you, I don't really like fries that much. But, like, Melissa got me addicted to them. It's sickening. You know, I didn't grow up in this country. We didn't really eat fries anywhere. Like, you know, basically ate, like, shish kebabs all the time and, like, salads. But, you know, here in America, um, great country where you get taxed uh, to death, you eat fries all the time. It's not, ain't nothing wrong with that, you know. So, let me see. You guys want me to remove this back plate quick? I think I have the screwdriver here. Um, I'm thinking if it's repairable, I, I do have a carb. But I don't know if this even has any compression. Uh, atomic energy, I'm originally Russian, but I lived in Ukraine. So, you know, today the irony is people like, which side do you support? You know, cause I was born in Russia, you know, but lived in Ukraine most of the time. Um, to be honest with you, I don't support either side, like at all, politically speaking, you know, the war, the war is terrible. You know, America is spending money funding sides that are just never going to end the war, right? They're all just interested in federal aid from multiple countries. Now, of course... You can't just go and fight lands because you want to take it. You know, th this is not like the archaic uh, Roman times over here, right? This is not the barbarians. Um, this ain't a movie. But, you know, we're also supporting wars that clearly at this point probably have no chance of being won. Let's, uh, l l let's just face it, guys. You know? Really, I... Oh, man, this screw. Can't get the screw. I need that bigger screwdriver. Hey, Melissa, do you know what a yellow screwdriver is? Yeah. Atomic Energy goes, I agree. Yeah. To be honest with you, we shouldn't be funding either of them. It's real bad what's going on. But, like, seriously, like, none of them have really considered de-escalation. 
Maybe it's easy for me to say that. Okay, we got the screw. But, you know, uh, try to de-escalate a little, you know. Um, I know in America right now, for those of you maybe outside this country, there's a major crisis with, uh, you know, people that they call migrants from around the world. Major crisis. And everyone's just coming in. And basically, these governments are just saying, give us more federal aid, we'll, we'll tell them not to leave. You know, remember back when Trump was president, he said, we're going to cut all this federal aid. We're going to cut it all. Now, you know, it's nothing wrong with a, a normal amount of federal aid. Uh, but first, you got to take care of, of your homeland, you know. But, you know, some people don't like politics. And what I say to that is, if you have a claim that isn't based in logic, you probably don't like politics, right? If you have like a factual claim that is legitimate, then you shouldn't be afraid of anything. Okay, so here is uh, inside the engine. Looks normal. Okay, hold on. We're going to put this back plate down. You know, like I said, if you have a claim that isn't based on nonsense, you really shouldn't be afraid of uh, standing up for what you're, what you're saying. So take a look inside. The world's best lighting. It looks okay. The thing is, this is an ABN engine. They all look okay, but they have no compression. Yeah, it looks similar to the 15FE. That's that's what I'm saying. I, I don't know how they claim the 1.6 horsepower out of this. I, I just don't see it. There's, there's no pinch at the top at all. Zero pinch. We are in a pinch-free zone. So I have I have an option, you know, I could either I don't know, this this might be toast, guys. Gavin Williams wants to know it's my favorite Lincoln Park song. You know, honestly, all of them are good. That's why I chose my username hybrid back when I was like in middle school. It wasn't because I drove a Prius. All right, it wasn't because of that. It was uh Lincoln Park hybrid theory. Pretty much everything in that album was fantastic. In the end, Meteora, they're all good, you know. So Jared Smithers goes, pinch it with a warm clamp. Mm, these small ABN engines, I'm, I'm not an expert in that, you know, like I've never done it. Um, so anyways, that's kind of like what it is. Mm, what do you guys think? What I could try doing for now, first of all, I'm not sure if it's worth repairing. Also because, you know, I would need the carb from this engine. I would need this carb. From the Torque 16, this is a Duratrax engine. These carbs are also kind of junky, to be honest with you. That's like the world's smallest Venturi on the inside. So if I show it to you. Uh, John Hensley, the, the Phantom engine is vintage. They haven't made them in like probably 20 years. So this is the world's smallest carb Venturi. Well, look how small it is. But it seems it seems functional. But it's you can't tell, but really it's it's small, like in the few, you know, if compared like to my finger or something. It's real small. So this engine has really good compression. Um, this stuff was already on it, it's fine. But really, I you know, once again, someone cut like a hole in it right here to use as a starter with like a drill. Real, real sickening. But on the inside, it looks fresh, clean, it has really, really good compression. Actually, as I spin it over, I have to really struggle. Um, but if if this one is fixable, I would likely just swap the carbs out. But like, once again, when you're dealing with like engines of this nature, like they're so old, uh, it's, you're going to run into problems once, you know, either way. If you're even trying to repair something like this to get the, the, the parts you would need, you're better off not even doing that, you know. Te Texas Hill goes, maybe the sleeve will fit. So I, I thought about that, dude. Um, I thought about that. But this is a .16. We're probably going to have a problem. This is a .16. This is a .15. They're not likely to be the same. I, I would say, you know. Let me check out the back plate on that Phantom. So the back plate seal is actually still pretty good. That doesn't even look like a paper seal. That looks like a proper seal to me right there in the back plate. Yeah. You know, guys, I, I appreciate a, a little proper, you know, political discussion a lot of people are just, just afraid because, like I said, they, they have no real uh, – they don't stand behind their claims. They just stand behind feelings of claims. You know, 
Right now, the U.S. is sending out so much foreign aid, um, taxpayers don't even know what's going on. Why are we having inflation? Well, because you're printing money, sending it away. That's the cause of direct inflation, right? How do you get inflation? You print money, you release it into the money supply, uh, you've created inflation. That, that's basically basic uh, economics right there. All right, guys, I think, um, I think that's going to be it. Thank you all for tuning in. I appreciate the viewership. Um, Biden is, is actually a criminal. He should be held in criminal court. Um, I don't know how his administration was allowed to do what he does. I mean, knowing the way things were in school, you know, you always learned about the three branches of government and checks and balances. Today, there, there's literally zero checks and balances, guys. Where did the balances go? You, you have an administrator that is um, doing anything he wants. You know, uh, I was just discussing this issue before with like a friend of mine, right? And like, you know, if you're the border patrol, right? Like you still have a mission statement. It doesn't matter who the administrator is. It's like the FBI. You think the FBI is not going to investigate based on who the president is? No, the FBI's mission surpasses that. That's called the checks and freaking balances. All right. All right. RC Street and Sand, man. He goes, how do I become a channel member? Um, that would really make me a happy camper, bro. Um, you can click. There's like a join button, like right on the bottom. It depends if you're watching on like a, a computer or not. I think it's different layout. Or in every stream, I put in like a link to join the membership. So that 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 would be basically great. So there's like a join button. Uh, literally, I see it right now. It says join. But I'm on the laptop where I'm right now. Or you can click um, the link. There's a link that says become a channel member, right? So there's a channel membership button like right there on, on the browser. But on the, on the phone, it will be different. I think you would have to scroll. I think the comments uh, of the stream only appear like after. Let me see what you guys are saying after that. Uh, with, with uh, you know, I don't really care like when people like, oh, the left, the right, who cares, left, right, like, th those are just labels, they're dumbass labels, you know, um, there's just labels, bro, like, th they're supporting these policies that are criminal policies, in, in my opinion, like, you know, <clears throat> when I used to work for, like, Department of Finance, right, like, when I was, um, you know, in, in like, taxation, right, like, it, it didn't matter who um, the president was, it didn't matter who anybody was like, and let's say you're working for the IRS or whatever, you think you're not going to administer the federal tax law because you have a different president. It's irrelevant. The mission of that agency surpasses whatever administration you have. They can't make directives against them, you know, that, that are unlawful in my opinion, you know, um, you know, I don't know. I'm, pr I'm quite confident in this country. When you're issued an unlawful order, you don't have to follow it in the military. Why, why are people following unlawful orders? Like the border patrol just opening up the complete borders to everybody. Like that that's unlawful. You have literally not carried out the duties of your position. Uh, who here agrees? Who here agrees? If you don't, that's fine. Okay, I'm not going to hate you. It's all right. All right. You're, you're allowed to have an opinion as long as it's based on facts. All right. So... I'm going to be here for two more minutes. We're going to get the ultimate uh, two-minute countdown timer wherever I can find it. Don't know where I put it. Where's my countdown timer? Okay, yeah, you guys agree. Thank you. Because the thing is, that it's just logical. Like, for real. Like, if you have a mission, it's like the cops, right? It's like, let's say your local law enforcement. It doesn't matter who the governor is. Their law, is is it, it, it stands on its own. Like... Uh, I, why why are these like federal agencies homeland security uh all the levels of border patrol the local law enforcement why aren't they um standing by the law that basically um gives them power right like uh so basically i'm an auditor right i i do like audit uh and auditors could be subpoenaed auditors could also request documentation from pretty much anyone they audit you have the law is in your side. There's statutory law that says an, if you're under audit, you know, a, a, whatever tax auditor could request your bank statements. They could re request your water bills. They could request anything. And you have to comply. Guess what? If you don't comply with, with a uh, legal request from an auditor, um, they'll just make an assessment in the absence of documents, which will try to kill you. Okay? That's what's going to happen. Right. Um, let me see what you guys are saying. Don't know where my countdown timer is. Got to find it. Hold on. Okay. All right, here we 
go. So, countdown timer for two minutes. Channel member sponsored by No Music RC. He loves the two minute countdown, you know? It's all about two minutes. Okay, here we go. We got two minutes on the timer. When the timer is over, we're done. All right, then uh, we'll continue, guys. So, um, you know, anyways, let's see what you guys are saying. Um, anyways, law. Without law, what do you got? You got Roman numerals. Okay, that's what you got. All right. Oh, man, John Hansen goes, he fed his cat Sheba, bro. Our cat, Sandy, only eats Sheba. And the thing is, Sheba's, like, expensive. You know, uh, it's literally the most expensive cat food. Like, there is. And he only eats Sheba. That's right, Stones goes chaos. That's the thing, man. Like, you know, I don't really want to separate things into, like, liberal or conservative. That stuff is nonsense. You know, th those statements and, and like, uh, titles are basically just meant to, to make people hate each other. You know, when, when that happens, when you have two sides that are automatically dislike each other because of labels, they never come to a proper agreement that benefits the whole. Uh, so really, what matters is policy, right? Whatever policy you have has to be ethical, um, legal, and rational. And I think currently, right now, none of that is uh, going on in government, you know? Um, just, just none of it, you know? It's a little real sickening. Um, like, you know, a lot of YouTube videos are like, this leftist is that. Oh, this leftist is that. Uh, it, it's real nonsense. Like, you know, that title is, is going to make you dislike their position without really listening to their nonsense claim. You know, if the claim is nonsense, uh, you should be called down on it, right? And um, I'm not doing that again to certain people, okay? Right, so, Pitbull Air Cool, bro, thank you for uh, your viewership today. Tomorrow, guys, will be some sickening video. Uh, this Sunday... Is gonna be something exciting. Now I can't tell you what it is yet, but it's gonna be a nitro, of course. But what else could it be? This is a nitro gang channel, All right, guys? Uh, thank you for being here, paper saber. Oh, the beeper, the beeper. We gotta, we gotta find a cell phone to call a beeper. Someone, kidding around. All right, guys. Thank you all again so much. And um, like I said, if you're gonna buy anything, please use any of the links in the description of this video. They'll take you to a main, like literally anything you order. It's, Literally my uh, only affiliate deal that I did deal with, okay? I don't sponsor anybody else. Uh, oh, RC and Street, welcome to channel membership. Thank you, bro. Uh, there's some uh, member-only streams, like, from the past you could watch. Like, literally nobody else has access to them, okay? In fact, this might be one of them, too. All right, because... Um, serpent, baby. All right, so thank you all once again. And uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow, okay? Terror Curry, bro, thank you. Um... You got your serpent too, right? Dude, this thing is sick. This thing is sick. All right, good night, everyone.